Well, it's 12 noon here in Nigeria. Welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channels Television. I'm Kaido Kikilu, and these are your highlights on the show today. Oyo State Government blames the weekend's invasion of a state secretariat and assembly on miscreants high on cheap drugs as it vows to go after the leaders while police parade the suspects in the state capital. And now, the state governor, Omar Bargo, talks tough, declares state of emergency on thuggery with a shoot on site directive to security agencies who come in contact with thugs. And the FCC speaks on its investigation into the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry so far, says it has not cleared anyone allegedly involved in the fraud as it recovered 32.7 billion naira and $445,000. We'll begin with a developing story from Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital. Now, following the invasion of the State Secretariat and Assembly Complex over the weekend by a group of Yoruba Nation agitators, the Special Advisor to the Oyo State Governor of Security Matters, Mr. Fatai Oshini, says... A lot of lessons have been learned from Saturday's invasion of a state secretary by those who described as miscreants tagging themselves as Yoruba nation agitators. Well, speaking on our program, Morning Brief, Mr. Oshini explained that there is need to rejig our security architecture and the state government will not fold its hands and allow those he referred to as being under the influence of cheap drugs to disrupt the peace of the state. Meanwhile, the Oyo State Police Command is set to parade a suspect uh, who invaded the state government secretary at Ibadan on Saturday. Our correspondents in Ibadan, Bukola were confirmed that the parade ground had a display of foreign military camouflage, cutlasses, communicator radio boots, megaphone, uh, six executive Yoruba nation inscribed chairs, pump action guns, locally fabricated pistols, flags, three buses, a car, and three motorcycles. These are um, miscreants that um, I had indicated before. That seems to be on some kind of um, cheap drugs. And, uh, you know, uh, just like some movement that they will indoctrinate them, call them, call it hypnotism and all those things. And they think um, they can play a kind of stunt and get recognition. So that's just it. We woke up to see them. And of course, um, because they've been on their track, it was easy to dislodge them um, uh, when they started the madness. The Excellency Governor Shema Kinde has continued to meet with all the security aides um, on a daily basis um, um, when it becomes necessary to call a quick one to say, oh, We've heard that um, well, these people even have a training camp somewhere. Oh, um, how much of intelligence uh, do we have from there? Can we quickly move? We continue to do what we're doing. We've learned lessons. Um, we need to engage more with the people. Well, let's now bring you more on this developing situation. Different moving parts on this one. But we have joining us on the show uh, a leader of the Yoruba Council Worldwide, Mr. Oladotun Hassan, joins us virtually on the program. Thank you for joining us on Lunchtime Politics. Yeah, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be on your program. Good morning. Absolutely. Uh, good mo well, afternoon at this point. It's interesting to note that you're also a legal practitioner, but let's step back a bit. I know you have previously appealed to Yoruba nation agitators to sheath their sword, but that was last year before the elections because there had been some agitations, right? But help us understand the dynamics of the different groups uh, related to the Yoruba, well, the Yoruba culture and the people. So we have the Afbeni Ferry, we have the Yoruba Council, we have the Yoruba nation. And now this group that has just declared what it calls uh, the Democratic Republic of the Yoruba. 
So help us understand all of the different groups so we know where this is coming from to maybe isolate it. Well, uh, it's very important for us to condemn the, the criminals and most ridiculous acts of those group of uh, the drug to the persons uh, who are headed by drugs. Uh, we can do a lot in any way speaking for the generality of the Yoruba people. Uh, quite unreasonably, that um, they, they, they tag themselves the urban nation agitators. The urban nation is just every, everybody within the urban land. All of us are nation within the material state. But that is not a call that they now set the entire state have made by calling for a government. What they have just done is uh, terrorism, uh, is, um, is, you know, is quite unfortunate that that is reasonable felony and raising harm against the state. And it's illegal, and everyone I'm wanting around this should be should be put to, to, to proper check and the full weight of the law should be met against them, notwithstanding who else is not. But that now is it, to, to better clarify, Yoruba land is a large space with you know well cultured with Omoluabi ethos. Omoluabi is our grown norm. That is good characters and ethos. So we have hierarchy. We have the over, the only of people are there. Any other association or groups are under the, the that 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 emblem of that our unified society. Just like we have the Igbo society, we have the Australian society, we have the Hindu, we have globally, there is ethno global ethno society everywhere. But in view of the fact that um in the recent time there have been this um um, uh, um, um, notion by some group of people, uh, by um, claiming for the urban nation, that is not the way to seek for sovereignty or the independence. Independence is all got things just on the street of Ibadan or the street of Kanté. No, you don't do that. You have to look at, you have to do proper consultation. As far as we are concerned now, leaders of thought and elders and others resolve that we are still part of Nigeria. Any other thing that is lesser than that, our decision is oh restructuring. Let us have let us have a better share of Nigeria's uh, 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 um, view. Let us also be able to express that we don't want the military um, section to so one of the of the Abdulsalami constitution. We need a new people's constitution. That right. is our decision led by European leaders. We had a meeting in Ibadan um, 2024 that we had the Ibadan declaration. Governors were there. What we I marked was restructuring good governance, 25% allocation for education, and uh, uh, cultural revolution. These are our core values and our demand. Not just for us to sit somewhere in one gay panel and so we are going to, to your state. Those that just committed that are figments of people who do not even have the, major, the larger majority of us. The Uber County Worldwide is a body, is an umbrella body for all sons and daughters of the right. land. We have the affinity, yeah. we have the OPC, we have every other group, but they are all social cultural groups at the same time. Everybody has is a group of association within Yoruba land. Let me get your thoughts on this. I wonder, do you agree with this group uh, which believes that Yoruba people have not fared well in Nigeria and they argue that their welfare will be better guaranteed under a se separate sovereign? So uh, do you agree with them? when they say that they believe that the Yoruba people have not fared well in Nigeria? Well, let me clarify to you. The, the, the common shoes that bite every Nigeria is the same. The pain, the evil man is feeling is the same pain as our man is feeling. No pain is different. There's no coloration in our pain. We are just, when we make our opinion to the public, that is not to deviate reasoning that, oh, let us now shut the door. You know, for the fact that we're having a headache, doesn't mean we have to be heavy head. We can we can correct the anomaly. It is not by standard that Yorubas are suffering. How would you term suffering? Yorubas are hard working, except those that don't want to go to farm, those that don't want to think. Yorubas don't get to this uh, lame dog situation that we find ourselves because of the system that we find. But when we are calling now, it is the fact that our governor, our political leaders must see welfare of the people as paramount because that is lacking. Corruption has moving deep that we can no longer differentiate between agitation and those that are, are really, really hindering our development. 
this is a matter of the house. Development is about an inherent factor in every society. We must give it to some governors, or your state is trying, Lagos state is trying, Mogu um, state is trying, Ekit is trying, although it's trying. So we have to look at the communal leasing system. How do we now integrate properly? Once we are now seeing the, the, the lack of integration is what we have not been able to fill. We have seen integration in other spheres, but we still need that deep integration that will, that will attend, attend to the issue of the army of unemployed youth. We have a lot of unemployed youth that are just returning to becoming miscreant. And the earlier, the better we begin to look at that because those army of unemployed youth are the, are the evil uh, uh, tools that these agitators find so easy. They are just easy, easy virtues for them to use as tools to cause this uh, quagmire and catastrophe. We are now letting it know that at no point in time have we ever agreed that we have to separate from Nigeria. We have not gotten to that level, and we, will never, we have not reached anything close to that. Whatever we are discussing now is to better our lot as far as the Federal Republic of Nigeria is concerned. And it is not ethical. We are only trying to let the whole world know that it is high time we set a standard constitution. We are right. too great a nation to be, to be using a military um, um, Abu Salami constitution. Let us sit down. That is why the conversation of Comfab was important. That is why every society must discuss, but not without conversation on a premise that has to bring about development, economic integration, social welfare of the people, health and agriculture. These are right. core demands. And so let me a separate as the urban nation agitators or as the term. And it's very important that the social media be regulated. Because these are it's not just the urban nation agitators, we have seen them in the Biafra too. They have caused a lot of commotion and lives are being lost. We cannot continue to lose life on the premise of uh, the, the, the stupidity that we are witnessing. Well, that is another conversation, obviously, for another day, the, the regulation of social media, which, which you propose. But uh, as a lawyer, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Help us understand the difference between the right to self-determination, uh, secession, on the other hand, then there's a treasonable offense. Uh, where would you categorize this under? Well, right to self-determination uh, is the right in the uh, African Charter of Human Rights and Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, it's not entrenched in our constitution under Section 4 of 1999 Constitution. We have right to freedom of assembly. That is within our form. We have coupled right as a nation. But be that as it may, for you to get to establishment of a nation that is what is called plebiscite and referendum, that is what is called general um, um, assembly, assembly of views. And that discourse and conversation must be naturally imbibed by people. When America was about taking freedom from, from, from Britain, there was a crown call of commonness. There was a vision. There was a well-articulated constitution. But there was no, there have not been any, any document of that nature. Nobody has sat with anybody as far as the Yoruba nation and the is concerned. What we are talking about is that Yes, the, the, the right to self-determination is a fundamental right, but it must be guided under some principles that are laid out back of laws. And that's why I caution um, about, about the Akito I They cannot ignite a fire and just run away. And when there is a litmus of that incident, you turn your back that you are not aware. You must take responsibility for what is happening now because you encourage them. You told them that your nation is now. We caution you that we already have a president. Let us be properly guided. We don't think like this in Yoruba land. Yorubas are very wise, more than wise enough to, to fall to this kind of uh, uh, mesmerized tra uh, 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 trap. We cannot be the Udwin, and we are not part of this. And that's why we, our, our organization will continue to let the whole world know that what we stand for. Oh, dear. Uh, Mr. Aladatun Hassan. A legal practitioner and leader of Yoruba Council worldwide. Uh, we've been having that conversation with him. Looks like we lost him momentarily uh, due to a network connection, but we'd like to, uh, would we'll try rather to uh, reconnect with him to get his uh, landing thoughts on that. Uh, we lost you for a moment, uh, Mr. Hassan. I understand you're about. Uh, you can land on that thought quickly. I'd like to put in a quick question as we yeah. wind down. 
Yes, it's just to, about the to let the the world world that we are we are properly guided as a people. We embrace the spirit of Omoluabi, and that is what right. we are promoting. Like on the first of May now, by through the support of the Onyo, if a woman will be having our meeting with this evening, is to talk about the word Omoluabi Day, which is every first of May. Right. And we discuss, we project our culture. And that's so what obviously you these issues local. will be coming up uh, in the conversations uh, which you. you'll be having. But there's no way we'll have a conversation with you and not talk about Undo politics. You're also a major player. Uh, at least you've played a major role in Ondo politics. And um, one of the biggest uh, parts you've played is concerning the coming elections, particularly targeted at the governor. You said that the Ondo state governor is trying earlier on when you were talking about states that are trying. But it looks like you have a grouse or uh, an axe to grind with him, particularly uh, when it comes to qualifications and certificate. Uh, through your law firm, you've done some work. But then the governor has, through his lawyer, demanded a public apology uh, from you, published in three newspapers and withdrawal of the publications made regarding his certificates, alleging that uh, they are fake. Has that been done? Or do you stand uh, your ground? Yes, uh, we have to make a better clarification between governance and qualification to govern. And uh, once we raise opinion, you know, citizens have right under Freedom of Information Act to ask questions. And we've only made our question through the um, uh, Deputy Inspector General of Police in Abuja. And our application, which was a petition, was duly investigated. And police report was issued. And that is a privilege, is a privilege uh, 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 justification under law. That is not defamation. And you can see the governor came out to explain. Because what we saw on the face value is the fact that a school was established, because the high school was established in 1980, and the governor claimed to graduate in 1982. That is just a common knowledge that we made. You have to ask questions, and that's why we are people. And for the fact that Mr. Ebu wrote me a letter, Mr. Ebu is a senior uh, of, um, uh, colleague that I respect so much. We, com we communicate almost daily. And I'm very, very I was surprised, even without him serving me personally, for me, for before I saw the letter from me, the letter has already circulated to the whole global community, which is very, very wrong of him. But the fact that we have made a quote, a request, we, uh, if he needs to better clarify, he just needs to package all those things, take it to the police that this is the clarification to correct the, the earlier report. That was that it's not been, you know, asking a government uh, official a question is within the ambit of our of our rights. So we cannot be put told under that or for, for begging. No, it's even wrong to just tell me and apologize. No apology here. The governor has come, have come out to clarify. Now it's not subject to police do not carry a forensic investigation to, to adumbrate their earlier facts or neither correct their earlier facts. And whatever fact they are now to give us a final verdict, that is the, that is the outcome of the investigation. We have, have not come out to champion to, to campaign against the governor, or neither right. have I come to endorse anybody. I've only come around to show that as a president of Yoruba Council World, I have legal, legal rights. This is not my first case of intervening in matters of public interest. You knew me when maybe some years back when I shut down Lekito Gate over high increment of Lekito Fair. You were there, you were the one that covered for channels where your camera was smashed out. That was one of my rights that I've always been fighting for the society. So if anybody sees me fighting or agitated about records, when the governor has come out that oh, his school was merged as a private school to a public school, that at the end of the day there was that was there, it was under Jack on day, this adjust him. All he needs to do is to put it in affidavit and swear an affidavit to that fact, showing that this was how my records were, because there were a lot of lacunas. Right. DC, uh, uh, West African Examination Council accredited the school as a 1985. But there was an exam conducted in 1982. And that same exam was under GCE, not SSE. We all are aware that only SSE can be written by graduating SS3 student of from five. But be that as it may, the governor have come out to clarify himself. So but are you saying... Uh, uh, resolution of that is subject to police investigation right but Mr. Hassan, me, so i have no personal i have no personal uh, budget. you can see i've commended that 
the, right. the government of Ondo State are trying and developing Ondo State. I didn't write off governors, but when it comes to the rule of law, the how things must be, we must also say the truth at the same time. Understandably. Uh, and let's wind down on this one, because in that and that letter, which was written by your firm, says that uh, alleged that the government has been trying to compromise the integrity of the Nigeria police force in order to prejudice the outcome of the report of a screening committee of the APC. But now uh, you've said that he has since given some sort of explanation. So are you saying that you're OK with that explanation, that it makes sense and uh, still you're not going to withdraw uh, the statement you made? which, by the way, the lawyer says that they will take legal redress if you don't do that in seven days. Are you okay with it? Draw here. No, no, there's nothing to withdraw because I don't have the legitimate right to withdraw the police um, um, report. Right. Police report is a, is, is, a, is a public document from the Nigerian police. I don't have the right to withdraw that. And, or neither do I have the right to go and withdraw my question or querying. The governor have only provided answer. What I'm telling Mr. Governor is the fact that lay all these things before the police in an affidavit. Swore so the affidavit that this was the situation. That is what the, the, the Mr. Ebu ought to direct his anger towards the police and not me. That was just a misdirection of, uh, of anger. And I want to challenge him to put it to me where I committed any infractions that have to deal with defamation of the governor's uh, character. Asking fundamental question is a fundamental right. So if anybody say because, oh, you are you are slamming me today and because you are doing good at the other side, I should not query you. That will not be justiciable as a society. We also have an egalitarian society. Both right. the citizens and the government have responsibility. We have responsibility to ensure that you that is governing us, you are fully prepared, fit and proper. And if Mr. Governor of Bondo State have shown to the whole world that this is the situation, let him just put that in record to the police and let the police clarify that and that becomes his own shield. All right. Nobody is using that as an attack against him. But I will not in any way see that as a means well, to Mr. tender Hassan. apology. Rather, Mr. Ebu needs to tend the apology to my person for showing a private letter to the whole world, for making me feel that, yes, well, he does have to put me into, into everywhere. But for me, I don't have control over the police okay. document. However, we I have don't to get anchor. to anywhere the matter. Maybe it's not within my to, to defend. Well, we have to anchor at this point, but we'd like to thank you so much. And I should say, it's good to see you again. Uh, quite some memory, thank you very much. Uh, to recall the event at the toll gate. We've been speaking with uh, Mr. Olado Tohassan, legal practitioner and leader of Yoruba Council Worldwide on Merit of Issues. Thank you once again for your time. You're welcome back. Turn our attention to security in Niger state. And it's a tough stance against violence being taken by the state governor, Maribago, who has directed security men to shoot on sight any thug found threatening the peace within Mina, that's the state capital. The governor's directive is coming on the heels of thug reactivities, which led to the death of two persons on Friday night in Mina. Well, who was speaking at the Sala Durba, organized by the former governor of the state, Babangida Aliyu, at his farm. A state of emergency on shoot aside on any talk found within the metropolis and even within the state. We have zero tolerance for rascality and toggery. Uh, those artisanal miners that are causing this havoc within the town, we have closed their side, and anybody found here will be shot to death. And we have read our commitment to that. Those that are sponsoring them will be dealt with decisively and those that are going to be found wanting will be dealt with decisively. We are, uh, we are using maximum trust to curtail their activities and we are not going to uh, restrain on our words. We have said any house that is found where housing the talks should be demolished and any talk found with any weapon should be dealt with accordingly. And ahead of the November 16th gubernatorial election in Ondo State, the Lagos State Governor Babaji Sonwalu says the APC in the Southwest Zone will continue to work with stakeholders to ensure the party remains uh, the party of choice. Governor Sonwalu, who is the APC Zonal Coordinator for Southwest, said members of the National Working Committee and Zonal Working Committee in the Zone had resolved to intervene on issues and engage with critical stakeholders to ensure they were not only taken care of, but also enjoy the dividends 
of democracy. We were speaking uh, at that meeting with the Southwest Party leaders who have backed him as zonal coordinator. We will identify places where we need to work, and work is a continuity. We are working in Oyo State, we will continue to work in Oshun State, and we'll continue to work also in Ondo State. But maybe Ondo has a unique um, issue because he also has an election that is coming, and that affects all parties. There are candidates that have been thrown out, you know, there are people that have aspired, you know, um, to be, you know, aspirants that will turn up to be candidates, you know, after primary election. So, there's no problem at all. We're all brothers, we're all sisters, we'll resolve all our issues in-house. And I can rest assured that APC will continue to remain the party of choice. We've come out with far-reaching decisions that we believe will first help us put the foot of the party properly, you know, in, in, the, in the region as easy as um, even a place to meet and, you know, the functionality of the secretariat is important. We've given instructions as in within the next one month for us to get a befitting place um, and also set up internal committees to work around ensuring we have um, an engaging General Assembly meeting um, that will happen in the first week of June. Over two months into the investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, into the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, uh, the Commission now says it has not cleared anyone allegedly involved in the fraud in its investigation and is asking the public to ignore any claim to the contrary. In a statement by the spokesperson of the EFCC, Mr. Dili Oiwali, which has tagged set in the record straight on investigations of humanitarian ministry, the anti-graft agency maintained that investigations are still ongoing and the commission has so far recovered 32 billion naira and $445,000 from the ministry. The statement reads in part, Discrete investigations have, uh, or by the EFCC, have opened other front lens dealings involved uh, that involve COVID-19 funds, the World Bank loan, a voucher recovered loot released to the ministry by the federal government to execute its poverty elevation mandate. And the statement further states that banks involved in the alleged fraud are being investigated. Managing directors of indicted banks have made useful statements to investigators digging into the infractions. In January this year, President Bola Tinubu suspended Dr. Beta Edu as Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation over allegations that she directed the Accountant General of the Federation, Uluatoi Madeng, to transfer 585 million naira to a private owned uh, account by one Oniyelo Bridget. The former minister was also involved in the mix, as well as a former head of NSIPA. And that's the program for this hour. Thank you for watching. I'm Coyote Okikyolu. Goodbye.